Hey, Hickok45 with my new fancy semi-automatic revolver. Let's see if it works. Yeah, pretty cool. Why would I be so dumb to call this a semi-automatic? I don't know. Let's look at it and see why I would say something that stupid. Well, it is a revolver. As you can tell, it has one of those cylinders on it, and uh, that kind of makes it revolve, and it looks a lot like a revolver. But you saw what I was firing? See this beautiful Federal 9mm ammo? Yes, 9mm, but I was putting it in a revolver. Now, that's not all that uncommon, I guess, is it? Well, there's several of these things made. Uh, Ruger makes one. Uh, Smith, I think, makes one or two models that, that fire the 9mm in a revolver. But this one's a little different. If you notice, there's no moon clip I'm using. It doesn't need a moon clip. In fact, you cannot use a moon clip with it or half moon clip or quarter moon clip or anything, okay? It doesn't need one. I'll show you. Let me try that again. Let's just get that guy out of the way. Whoa! <laughs> uh oh, I'm missing again. There we go. <laughs> need to figure out where to hold, don't I? Yeah, it's uh, it doesn't need a moon clip. It's uh, it's an older model. It's the 547. And the folks up at uh, oh, I threw away the brass. I didn't mean to do that. Up at Tennessee Gun Country, uh, lent us this. Uh, the owner up there has a really nice collection. I shouldn't say it, telling on him, but of, of old Smith revolvers, and has been nice enough to lend us uh, a couple. This is one of them. It was made in 1980 and between 80 and 85, this model, the, the Smith & Wesson model 547 in nine millimeter. Now this is back in the day before, you know, nine millimeter ran the world. This is back before Glocks were around and so many of the polymer Wonder Nines and everything. But yet this was chambered in nine millimeter. And it's a little different. I'll let you take a look at it uh, here in a second. We'll get it uh, uh, clear. Uh, look at the, the extractor this was very expensive to make that's why they didn't make it too long it has these little fingers that uh, hold the round act as kind of an extractor and hold the round in and then push it out I'm gonna push on one of those if I can with my knife you can see it's uh, see it's flexible I don't know if we can see that or not but it's it's a little finger of uh, metal like a spring and it holds the round in there so you don't need uh, moon clip kind of wild looking in it you can imagine that would not be simple to make or inexpensive okay and because it's a semi-automatic cartridge you push it in and it goes in just fine but you got to just you know push it in there and that that's what holds it and then so that it doesn't with that tapered cartridge come back out of there when you fire notice let me take it out notice up here on the uh, uh, recoil shield I'll see if I can get the firing pin exposed here let's go ahead and cock it and pull the trigger you see the firing pin and above it there's another little pin there that protrudes a little bit when you pull the trigger and that holds the cartridge in place pretty interesting it's the first time i have seen this this is kind of new to me all right so it's uh, it's a nine millimeter revolver and it took a lot to to make it i've read a couple of stories of where this came from and what the motivation was everything from gosh the the uh, Palestinian police force made by the Israelis back in the design back in the late 70s for that uh, the French National Police so I'm not sure who's correct it, it doesn't really matter but it was only made for a short period of time for five years and this is rather unique for the time for one thing also you notice it had a frame mounted firing pin there's no firing pin on the hammer well that's not so unusual these days but for the 19 early 80s that is so that was all part of, of uh, designing it and manufacturing it so they would handle the 9mm cartridge. See? It's got a little short bobbed hammer there. Okay? Pretty cool, isn't it? And so, also, for you folks who are more knowledgeable about revolvers, uh, does that look like anything else you might be aware of? It's a revolver I do not own that I would love to own. The 3 inch bull barrel model 13 the one the fbi carried back in the late 70s the 80s up in maybe even early 90s i've got the 65 and the stainless but they carried a model 13 it is just like that but this is the nine millimeter version of that okay theirs was in 357 the model 13 
So anyway, I thought you might just be interested in see it. We're not going to shoot it a thousand times. If I did, it would take all night. But uh, you might not have been aware, like me, that there was a 9mm made this far back in the early 80s uh, that looked like just a regular old Smith & Wesson revolver. Pretty cool. Doesn't go back into the pin barrel era. Well, you know what? They did pin barrels up until around 81 or 82, I think, on some of their guns. So I guess there might have even been uh, some of these that were pin barrel. This one is a uh, 3-inch with a round butt. They made it also in a 4-inch with a square butt. And uh, this would be a cool little carry gun, I'll tell you. And as popular as 9mm is, if you happen to run across one of these, it wouldn't be all that, that impractical, would it? Except that the guns are fairly expensive. I think these probably run eight, nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. I don't know. They're they're collectors' pieces, actually. All right, let's see. I think it shoots a little high. You know, it's having a little trouble uh, hitting with it. That might just be me. There we go. Get that thing on target and hold it. Nice. There's a pot that needs to be smoked. All right, a little smoke, but it's still there. Cool. And I should have another round or two, which I do. Let's try a uh, two liter down there further away. <laughs> All right, one more. Nice. Yeah, it needs about a six o'clock hold. Uh, and it does just fine. Not bad. You know, one, one thing you notice about it, John and I both remarked, is that, uh, you, you, I mean, I know a lot of us love a nine millimeter, nothing wrong with a nine millimeter, uh, really with, you know, modern ammo. But one thing you notice with this, when you do shoot it, uh, this is just range ammo, that it's got a little bit of kick, not anything to write home about, but it reminds you that nine millimeter is not a wimp. Uh, because, I mean, not very often is it that you get to shoot a nine millimeter in a regular old heavy, you know, revolver like this, and it does, it jumps a little bit. You can feel the, the power, feel the power. Of course, it's totally worthless if it will not put one on the gong. Let's see if we can do that. Boy, that front sight needs paint on it badly. There we go. I love the ring. Let's kill a cowboy with it. In a coffin. <laughs> and another cowboy. In a coffin. Click, 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 click. So, pretty cool. Uh, really, if, if you had this in your collection, you might not even want to shoot it too much. It's, uh, it's a collectible firearm, no doubt about it. Not many of these around. They made about 10,000 of them. And this is one of them. Pretty smart, aren't I? One of the 10, I think it's 10,200, something, something like that, with a bobbed hammer. And uh, again, this is a, it, it, and, and the fellow who owns this up at Tennessee Gun Country, he, he has the same passion, I think, that I do for revolvers. He must have, I don't know how many he has, but it seems like every revolver he shows me uh, from his safe, it's a three inch revolver. He's got a uh, 696, just several, uh, even the FBI. Uh, 357 Magnum Model 13 in a 3 inch and you know from uh, my collection I have several 3 inch uh, revolvers especially with the bull barrel just a great length on a on a revolver very practical very shootable and, and just nice but this is a pretty interesting gun and, and they discontinued it you can imagine why because that look at that thing to make that kind of extractor with those springs to work reliably and so far we've had no problem with it it does what it was designed to do. So uh, maybe if you think this is really cool, you could write Smith and Wesson, and they'll start making them again for you. What do you think? <laughs> well, we got to shoot one more round. Is that all right? Anybody in a hurry? Come on now, you're not in that big hurry. Let's load her up again. So you do. It, it would be difficult to load with a speed loader for one thing, because you do need to push just a little bit on the round. Not hard, but just push it past that little extractor spring so it locks in. It's kind of nice, though, not to need the uh, moon clips. And, and shoot it just like a revolver. Okay. 
Why did I take my ears off? All right. Oh, there's a pot. Didn't get smoked. Yeah, that's the one I kept missing, isn't it? Let's try the tree. Got a pretty nice double action, I'll have to say. So anyway, I'm just uh, incorrigible. I'm, a, I'm very fond of revolvers, you know that. And uh, it's interesting that so many of you are too, young and old. They're just really nifty uh, firearms. And you can have so much fun with one of these at the range, whatever the cartridge is. It doesn't have to be a nine millimeter. It could be anything uh, that, that you enjoy. Uh, just, just gobs of fun. and. If you notice the way it ejects brass, it doesn't throw it very far from the gun, does it? Unless you want it to. It's because it's not a semi-automatic. You know something I forgot? I was about to wrap up and let you go eat. What, what do we normally do with a gun that could be a carry gun? We test it with hollow point ammo. And I almost forgot. Because I know you want to know whether this thing will function and feed hollow point ammo. What good's a 9mm handgun if it won't feed 9mm? So shouldn't we test it for that? Yes, we should. So there we go. Let's try it. And since it's a defensive uh, cartridge, there, it's just there we go. Not bad. Bad guys down, and all the ammo fed just fine, even with that big hollow point hydro shot. Pretty impressive, huh? So anyway, now I'll let you go eat. Pretty nice revolver. I'm, I. Uh, I'm glad I got to borrow it and, and try it out. And I'm especially glad you were not doing anything and you came by the compound to, to kind of watch and enjoy it with us. So anyway, 547 Smith & Wesson. Don't look for one in your local gun shop because they probably don't have it. But pretty cool. Life is good. Hi, I'm Zeke with the Sonoran Desert Institute. And here at SDI, we're extremely proud to be sponsors of the Hickok 45 channel. You may be asking yourself, well, what is SDI? SDI is an affordable, fully accredited distance learning education program. We have an emphasis in gunsmithing and firearms technology. If you decide to become a gunsmith, you'll need to learn proper gunsmithing techniques. And while some people will use an apprenticeship program to gain these techniques, a formal education will ensure an organized, more comprehensive learning environment. But when you choose a gunsmithing school, it's still kind of difficult. So it's very important that you choose a gunsmithing school that meet the following criteria. First, look for a nationally or regionally accredited program. And whether distance learning online or through a brick and mortar ground program, a gunsmithing program should always have a hands-on element. And finally, make sure you look for a school with high student satisfaction. Find reviews online, check out its Facebook or other social media, or get on the same social media sites, find some alumni, and ask to speak with them about their experience. And while we're not at SDI today, I do have some of the firearms I've learned to work on and built myself through the SDI program. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, maybe not, we'll just get seriously. Can I not get a chair that fits me? I'm a big guy, dude. So I guess back to what we were originally talking about. Above all else, find the school that's right for you. It's not always going to be the distance education programs or the brick and mortar ground schools that are for everybody. Just make sure you do your research on multiple options before you make that decision. But if you want more information on our gunsmithing school, just go to www.sdi.edu or call us at 1-800-336-8939. Mm-hmm. <laughs>